Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Kagabi, bandang hating gabi, bigla akong nakatanggap ng message uh, mula sa aking nakababatang kapatid, si Bishop Pambo. Uh, sabi niya, pwede bang pakibuksan mo yung email mo? Meron lang mga akong message sa iyo doon. Alam niya na tapped yung kanyang telepono. Sabi niya, maaari bang ikaw nang kumatawan sa akin sa pagtanggap ng parangal mula sa Diokno Foundation, sa Diokno Family, sa, at De La Salle, uh, kaugnay ng Kapepe Diokno Human Rights Award. <clears throat> eh, sabi ko, bisita lamang ako, hindi ba? Sasamahan lang kita. Pero meron kasing nag-advise sa akin na huwag na muna akong umuwi sa akin bahay sa Kalohokan. Uh, sabi niya, alam mo na siguro kung bakit. Sabi ko, hindi ko alam. Pero, sige, sabi ko, malaking karangalan para sa akin sapagkat matagal kong nakatrabaho si Ka Pepe. No? Uh, in the years uh, preceding the, the Edsa Revolution, to be an, an honor, sabi ko sa kanya. Pero meron ka bang naisulat na response. Uh, sabi niya, wala pa. Uh, uh, pero magsusulat ako ng mga notes. And at 3.30 this morning, obviously, he had not slept. No, He sent me another email and uh, another message saying, pwede bang pakitingnan mo yon? Ayusin mo na lamang. Tutal ikaw ang writer. Sabi niya sa akin. Uh, at uh, pakibasa. So, eto yun. I thank the family of the late Senator Jose W. Diokno and the members of the board of the Diokno Foundation and the De La Salle University for honoring me with the Kapepe Diokno Human Rights Award. Like I told Attorney Hill De Los Reyes, who had relayed the news to me, I feel awkward receiving this award, especially for something that I need to do as a matter of duty. But in celebration of the memory of the late Cape Pediocno, the original and pioneer champion of human rights in our country, I gladly accept it in all humility. I am equally honored to have Miss Maria Ressa of Rappler a woman and a journalist of exemplary courage as my co-awardee. I deeply apologize for not being able to come and receive this award myself. At the last minute, I am requesting my kuya, Randy David, to please represent me in this morning ceremony. I feel embarrassed that my own personal guests whom I invited to attend this event, and I think many of them are here, led by Father Jerome of the uh, San Roque uh, Parish, uh, and, and some families uh, from, from Kalokan and some nuns who, who work with him are here with us. Uh, I'm embarrassed that they could be looking for me. I thank them for their solidarity. Even as I had given my word to the organizers that I was going to come, I hope you will forgive me for not being able to join you today. For over a week now, my mobile phone has been buzzing with text messages written in screaming and intimidating capital letters telling me that I was next in line for execution. Well-meaning friends who worry for my personal safety have advised me not to take these threats to my person lightly. So in begging off from today's event, what was paramount is that I did not want to unnecessarily endanger the lives of those who would accompany me to this venue. In the past 48 hours, high-ranking officials of the PNP have been trying to reach me to inquire about these threats, to verify them, and to offer me protection. Uh, indeed, uh, the other day, 
a detachment of uniformed police officers were posted just outside the cathedral grounds. I truly appreciate their concern. Uh, but I honestly don't know what to make of all of this. The local police chief of Caloocan City informed me that he had been, quote, tasked to seek an audience, unquote, with me to discuss how he could be, quote, of help in the provision of my security, unquote. He said his, quote, superiors wish to extend services in providing me with security, unquote. I found this ironic. This is Ambon, not me, no? Uh, I found this ironic, and I let him know how I felt. Sir, I said, as far as I know, your ultimate superior is the president himself. I recall he was the first to pose a grave threat against my life. In early December last year, as we approached the Christmas season, he had told an audience, quote, Bishop David of Caloacan, I know you roam around at night. You must be into drugs. If I catch you with even just one gram of shabu, I will chop off your head, unquote. After that remark, I was advised to stop praying the rosary every night while walking around the San Roque Cathedral grounds because the president had insinuated that such a behavior, which I suppose his surveillance people had reported to him, could mean that I must be into drugs. Nobody from the PNP then came to offer help for my security after that public threat. While thanking him for his concern, I told the local police chief, quote, I hope you understand my cautiousness now that you are offering help from my security as ordered by your superiors. It was your highest superior who wanted to pin me down as being into drugs, all because a shepherd of, of my flock, I have publicly questioned the drug-related killings, the illegal arrests, and the human rights violations that have been happening routinely in our slum communities for the past three years now." Unquote. I ended my reply to the said police officer thus, Sir, you seem to be close to many people in the church, being a former seminarian yourself. Are you assuring me that your loyalty to the law and the Constitution is stronger than your loyalty to your superior. I, all, I wish I could have your assurance on this before you, quote, relay the message to your superiors, unquote, so I can decide whether or not I should feel confident about your offer to provide me with security. Sincerely yours, Bishop Ambo David. It was in response to Pope Francis' call early in his papacy that I, as Bishop of Caloacan, insisted on the need to go out to the peripheries. Heeding this timely call, we have established several mission stations in the most marginal urban poor communities of South Caloacan, Malabon, and Navotas. These mission stations have made it possible for the poor to have direct access to the church for vital forms of urgent support, especially when the wolves attack them. With deep sadness, I must admit that we have not always been successful. Sometimes we struggle with the wolves who prey on them and are content to be able to retrieve even just a leg or an ear of a victim. In pursuing our work, we go by the belief once beautifully expressed in the Misna and the Quran, quote, to save one human being is to save all of humanity, unquote. Thank you so much. <laughs>